Hi all, uh, today we'll be looking at um, finding the zeros of a function. Um, the zero of a function is simply a number. that causes the function to evaluate to zero. And hence its name, the zero of a function. So for example, if I have um, a function f of x is equals to 2x minus 4, well, if I plug in the number 2, I will get 2 times 2 minus 4, which is 4 minus 4, which is equals to well, the zero of a function <coughs> actually plays several key roles in functions, but first and foremost, we look at how do you find the zero of a function. So finding the zeros. The zero of zeros, some functions have more than one zero. <laughs> um, but very simply, we use the fact that we know the answer will be zero. So if I have, for instance, an example, f of x is equals to 3x plus 12, and I'm trying to find the zero, I just simply say, well, when I have 3x plus 12, and I plug the number x I'm looking for, the answer is going to be zero. And then I simply solve this equation. And so therefore, minus 12, minus 12, so 3x is equal to negative 12, divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get x is equal to negative 4. And so we see negative 4 is the zero of the function. Now consider this. Let's see if I ask you to solve the equation. Solve for x. So this right here is your zero. And when I'm solving 4x, but my equation right here is 3x plus 12. Notice I'm just ignoring the function um, utility. And I'm just going here and just say, I have an equation, solve for x. Well, obviously, this is going to be the same information because it's 3x plus 12 equals 0. So minus 12 minus 12. And so 3x equals negative 12 divided by 3 divided by 3. So x is equal to negative 4. This right here is the solution. And again, if I ask you to find the x-intercept, so we all know when we find the x-intercept, that means make y equals 0. And if I have a function f of x is equal to 3x plus 12, if I make y 0, lo and behold, I get exactly the same problem. So subtract 12. I'm getting tired of subtracting 12 now. Negative 12 equals 3x divided by 3. I get x is equals to um, negative 4. And so what we have is that the x-intercept is negative 4. Or sometimes we write it as negative 4, comma 4. These three terms, 0, solution, and x-intercept, refer to the same value of a function. That, that number, that when I plug it into a function, I get zero. All of these right here are also called the root of the function. And I don't know where, why they call it the root, but I believe it has something to do with trees. You know, the roots go under the ground. But if I have to graph the function right here, if you think of the ground as the x-axis being the ground, well, negative 4 right here my function has a positive slope of 3 so my function will look something like this this right here is your root because that's where the graph is breaking through the ground you know the tree's growing i don't know uh, who knows oh could be that the roots you know is keen creating the, the function itself but hey um thing is that you just need to know, understand that all three of these things the zero the solution the x-intercept right here it's the same thing. And so the nice thing is, whenever you're finding a zero, you already know what to do because you've already been able to find the x-intercept. So that makes your life easy. Let's look at another example of finding the zeros. 
Let's say I have f of x is equals to 2 thirds x minus 1 fifth, and I'm trying to find the theorem. Now, is it 0 or is it zeros? Hmm. Let's go ahead and solve this right here. So that's 0 equals 2 thirds x minus 1 fifth. Right here, I take the one fifth over, so I add one fifth to both sides. If you prefer, you could just cancel the denominators. But since it's only just the one fifth, I don't have to really concern myself with that right here. And then to solve for x, I have to cancel the two thirds. The way you cancel the two thirds is by multiplying by the reciprocal of two thirds. And so you multiply both sides by three halves. That's the key right here in solving this equation. And so I get right here is that 3 halves and the 2 thirds cancels out. And then you multiply across. 3 times 1 is 3. And you multiply across 2 times 5 is 10. So x is 3 tenths. Hmm. I got one answer. There's a rule that you learn about at some point called the fundamental theorem of algebra. The power of x, right here, see how x raised, raised to the first power? Then that tells us, at most, we have one solution. We have one zero for our equation. For example, if I have, so find the zero of, and I have f of x is equals to x squared plus 8x plus 15. That does not look like an x squared. Not there. Right here. Now I have x to the second power. Well, to solve this right here, <coughs> and this is something that you will learn very quickly. Once you have a power of x that's greater than 1, normally you need some kind of technique to solve the equation. In this case right here, I'm trying to find a 0, so I set it equal to 0. So I have x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. And this time I will factor the problem. This factors into x plus 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. And then I will have your x plus 3 equals 0. And then your x plus 5 equals 0. So you get x equals negative 3 x equals negative 5. And so this equation right here has two zeros, two roots, as they say, two solutions, as they say, two x-intercepts, as they say. And so you, you have that right here. Um, go ahead and subscribe, uh, so that way you know when new video videos are up.